Muslim Solidarity Players presents for you tonight the play To Catch a Muslim. The play was written by Steve Downs. Welcome to our play about the entrapment of Yassin Araf and Mohammed Hussein. We have condensed some events and taken some liberties with others, especially the secret discussions and quotes that the defense was not allowed to know about. But the play is based on actual facts and quotes from the record. And we will hold up signs to call your attention <laughs> to this when the actual facts and quotes appear. And now, let the play begin. This is scene one, The Targets. Sir, we have just received information that the notorious Al-Qaeda bomb maker, Muhammad Yassin, might be hiding in the U.S. as the Imam of Masjid al-Salam in Albany. Yassin Araf. That's terrible! Why do we think this? Well, the NSA has been keeping Araf under electronic surveillance for years, but never found anything. However, now we have reliable information that his appearance might be somewhat similar to the bomb maker's. If only we knew what the bomb maker looked like. <laughs> well, that's good enough for me. Remember what Dick Cheney said, if there's a 1% chance he's a terrorist, we have to act as if it's certain. What do we do now? Well, we could spend years following ARF around to see if he tries any attacks, or, or, we could frame him with a sting, and then force him to give us all his secret information. The sting's the thing to make him sing. Very clever, Agent. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I see. Here's the script. I see we need an entrapment agent. Yes, sir, and I think we have the right person here. Malik? Hmm. How reliable is he? He committed felony fraud 80 to 100 times in the U.S. He's wanted for murder in Pakistan, and he's committing fraud in his bankruptcy proceeding in Albany. Perfect. He's someone we can really work with. Molly, are you willing to entrap Yasin Araf in exchange for us putting you on the FBI payroll and making all your legal troubles go away? Consider it done. He is already as good as entrapped. And may I say, sir, that your handsome appearance is exceeded only by your penetrating intelligence. <laughs> Look, I see here in the script that we need someone to be the co-conspirator because Malik as a co-conspirator cannot conspire, or Malik as a government agent cannot co con conspire with the target. Government agents conspiring with targets would suggest that the government was trying to entrap innocent people which would be completely outrageous and improper. Of course, sir. We think that Mohammed Hussein would be a suitable co-conspirator. He badly needs money to fix up his properties, and his monetary needs are likely to blind his caution. Scene two, the setup. my dear friend. How good to see you. Here are toys for your children. And here are gifts for your wife. You are so brilliant, so true to the faith. I want your advice about Islam. Is it permitted for someone to blow up a bank in order to get money for jihad? <laughs> Just joking. I don't need to blow up a bank because I make so much money. I have enormous amounts of money. See, I drive a big car. I can flash a roll of bills. See, I have a large warehouse full of merchandise. I can make you a loan for your business. Here, take $50,000. Just pay me back $45,000. I make it from selling misiles. Here is one right now that I am sending to New York City to assassinate the Pakistani ambassador. You can help me with the business. I work with a secret organization. We are very dangerous. We use code words. How much money do you want? Is $50,000 enough? I can lend you more later after I sell more missiles. So tell me, was the destruction of the World Trade Center good or bad? What is your opinion? Uh, of course, it was bad. We should have good relations with the unbelievers. Then, because of our goodness, Islam will spread and continue spreading. I am one of the true citizens of this country. I am one of the best citizens of this country. I am teaching my children to behave. I'm a businessman. I'm a house owner. 
I have nothing to do with anything else. This is my country. Otherwise, why am I doing this? I don't want anything to do with your business. But I could use the money. <laughs> Can you loan me 50000 Of course. I've already said so. But now, we need a witness so the loan will be properly recorded for our religious requirements. We can pick anyone you like, except I don't want any Yemenis, they are too scrupulous, and Egyptians, they gossip, and no Pakistanis or Bangladeshis or Indians because they talk too much and will tell people I'm loaning a lot of money, or Algerians, or Indonesians, or Afghanis, or North Africans, or Jordanians, or Middle Easterners, or people who are not from the Middle East. Our mom, Yassin Arab, is Kurdish. He usually witnesses loans. Oh, Kurdish. That is the only group I don't distrust. Yes, he might be acceptable. I'm glad that you, not I, suggested him, because if I were with the FBI, it would be completely improper for me to suggest him just to involve him in this transaction. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Why would I be with the FBI? I'm incredibly rich, selling illegal arms to very bad people all over the world. How could I possibly be involved, involved with the FBI? I'm amazed that you would even think so. Goodbye, my dear friend. Soon, I will give you $50,000. Very good. Now all we have to do is show the missile to Aref when he witnesses the loan and explain that the proceeds of the loan came from the sale of the missile to kill the Pakistani ambassador. But is that wise? If Aref sees the missile, he would know something illegal was going on and he might spook and refuse to do anything. Good point. We can't let him know about the missile. Uh, perhaps we can show him a part of it, a tail fin or a nose cone. Something he wouldn't recognize. We have to be able to tell the jury that he saw the missile. How about just the handle? <laughs> it doesn't look like anything associated with a missile. I couldn't even find it in the evidence room when I looked for it. Kind of looks like a supermarket pricing gun. Perfect. Now, Malik, when AREF witnesses the loan, you distract him by having him count the money, and then show Hussein the handle and tell him that the proceeds of the loan came from the sale of the missile. But Air, if he hears the word missile, he might get spooked. Right. Okay, Malik, make sure you always mispronounce the word as misile. Air F doesn't know much English, and if you speak quickly and jump all over the place, he won't catch on. Yassine, my dear friend, how good to see you. I'm incredibly wealthy, and I want to use my wealth to benefit the religion. You're my imam. Tell me. How to do it? What does Allah want? <laughs> but before you do that, witness this loan between me and my dear friend Muhammad. Here's a $5,000 down payment. Please count this money and make sure that every dollar is there. We interrupt this performance for a special announcement. The next sentence you will hear is the key sentence in the sting. It is the only sentence that connects the sale of the missile with the loan. So it is the only sentence that would inform a ref that witnessing the loan would be illegal. Just one garbled sentence. Hey, just one sentence is enough for criminal liability. That's the law, okay? It was a garbled sentence, but ARF could have figured it out if he was paying attention. That's right. Sure, Malik distracted him by having him count money, but Malik didn't want ARF to understand the sentence so he wouldn't be spooked. Anyway, it's up to the jury to decide. So here is the key sentence, and you, the audience, can decide. Now listen carefully. Okay. And the $45,000 will be coming, like, I have to give them something, you know, the instrument. That will be coming, like, in a, uh, I would say probably a couple of weeks from now. Okay, because you need money. Then, I have to get that, you know, because, uh, though, because the last time I showed you, you know, when I said I have to send this in, uh, then they will give me $45,000, $50,000, okay? This is the part of the missile that I showed you. So, as soon as it comes, I'll give you this. This is $5,000, so the next couple of weeks or less. All is correct. Thank you, brother. You performed your duties as witness so brilliantly. I can see the depth of your understanding of Islam. Can you instruct me on an important point of faith? Which is more important, Allah's law or American law? We Muslims live here in America. When we came here, we promised to respect the law here. That's why we came. 
And the most important thing for Muslims is to fulfill our promises. Thank you, brother. We will be in touch with you if we need anything more. Malik was incomprehensible. Nobody could understand what he was talking about. And Aref didn't pay him any attention at all. No jury will believe that Aref was part of that plan. Aref even believes in respecting American law. How crazy is that? Ray, we'll have to try something else. What about using a code? Perfect. Malik will have a coded conversation with Aref in which he explains all about how the proceeds of the loan came from the sale of the missile. Juries believe that criminals always talk in code. So if Ma Malik and Aref are speaking in code, they must be criminals. Right. We'll say that the word chaudry means missile. But suppose Aref learns what the code means. He might spook. We're not going to tell him what the code means. We'll just pretend that he knows. We'll say he was told at one of the earlier meetings. But all the meetings are recorded. If the jury sees the transcripts of the meeting, they'll realize he was never told. No problem. We'll just get Malik to pretend that he lost the body recorder for one meeting. Maybe he can accidentally drop it, so there won't be any transcript. Then you can say that Aref was told at that meeting that Chaudhry means missile. Brother Yassin, it is so good to see you. By the way, if I can give Hussein $50,000, I can certainly give you the same, because it all comes from my business of selling Chaudhry's. I import them, I sell them, they give me money. <laughs> Remember that uh, it was a month ago we wanted to, uh, that Chaudhry was going to New York to make that money, but it didn't use. So I, I, uh, when it happens, I have to leave the country for two months. I have to hide myself. Hide yourself? Why? You said the FBI is watching everyone here. They know I'm doing nothing. I'm just eating and drinking and talking about nothing more, so I don't have a problem. Okay, brother. I just do not want there to be a problem. I have no problem. Okay, we got it. Aerith was told he could get a $50,000 loan from the proceeds of the sale of a missile. That's all we need. Arrest him and lock him up. You're under arrest. What? Yeah, DWI. Driving while Islamic. <laughs> <laughs> Scene four. What happened next? Well, that was good, but we'll have to convincingly establish at trial that Aerath knew the word Chaudhry meant missile. No appellate court will uphold a conviction without proof that the target knew what the code meant. So in the meantime, what else can we do? Don't forget. We can give the judge a lot of secret evidence to show that Aerith is a dangerous bomb maker. Once the judge is convinced that Aerith is dangerous, he'll allow us to put in prejudicial and irrelevant material. The NSA has been secretly monitoring Aerith for years. We'll just cherry pick that material and use it to suggest he's a radical. Right. We can get our puppet Evan Coleman, who doesn't speak foreign languages and does his research online, to parent our line and that there's a vast terrorist conspiracy. We can pull out all the stops. We raid the mosque. We interrogate a hundred Muslims. We even put sharpshooters on buildings to scare the jury. We'll use every trick in the book. And that is how our play ends. The rest is simply legal grand opera. The government gave secret evidence to the judge, who then allowed the government to take every possible advantage during the trial. That's right. Here's a secret decision I'm giving to the prosecution, which the defense cannot see. And here I will tell the jury that the FBI had good and valid reasons for targeting a ref, so the jury will be afraid to acquit. The jury convicted Muhammad of all of the charges against him, even though he was not a target and was only involved because he was Yassin's friend. The jury acquitted Yassin of all the charges except for those surrounding the last coded conversation in which Malik talked about Chaudhry's. Even though there was no proof that Yassin knew what the code word Chaudhry meant. During the appeal, the government gave the judges a secret brief that the defense was not allowed to see. Then the government submitted a top secret brief that even the local prosecutor was not allowed to see. Then, during oral arguments, 
the defense was excused, and the prosecution had a secret discussion with the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. This case is a mess. There's no proof that Yassine knew the secret meaning of the code word Chaudhry. The counts in which the jury convicted Yassine all relate to the coded conversation. We have to throw all those counts out. A ref will be acquitted. You can't let him off. We told you secretly that he's an Al-Qaeda bomber named Muhammad Yassid. Well, we could say that there was enough other evidence to support a jury's verdict of guilt. What about that one garbled sentence when Malik showed Muhammad the handle of the missile? That sort of made a connection between the missile and the loan. But, but we showed all that to the jury, and they refused to convict ARF on the, that evidence. Ah, oh, that doesn't matter. If we judges say the evidence is sufficient, it doesn't matter that the jury disagreed. That's why it's such fun to be a federal judge and overrule the jury. <laughs> but how do we justify the fact that we're having all these secret meetings with the court and giving you all this secret information and you're giving us secret decisions? Uh, no problem. Uh, we have a law called CIPA that allows that. You don't even have to give the secret evidence to defense attorneys with security clearance. But. There is a New York Times article that quoted the NSA as saying that their secret surveillance program was a great success because it caught ARA. The story actually names ARA. No problem. No problem. We'll just say that nobody believes newspaper reporters. They're all such liars. Who could believe a word they say? So a ref was convicted only on evidence for which the jury found him not guilty, and he was sentenced to 15 years in jail. The same with Mohammed Hussein. In 2011, the defense obtained evidence that the prosecution believed Yassin was an Al-Qaeda bomb maker named Mohammed Yassin, and obtained proof that Mohammed Yassin died in 2010. Yassin Araf is still alive, so he cannot possibly be Mohammed Yassin, who is quite dead. Your Honor, defense is asking for a new trial, claiming we secretly told them that Arif, that we secretly told the court that Arif was an Al Qaeda bomb maker. They said that made the trial unfair. If the government secretly lied to the court that the defendant was an Al Qaeda bomb maker, that would certainly make the trial very unfair. But but we can't release Arif. It would make us look like idiots. It would make people ask questions about all the hundreds of Muslims that we framed. We would lose all of our promotions. Congress might take away our huge budget and they might make us follow the Constitution. No problem. No problem. We'll just say that even if the defendant's claims are true, they do not establish that he's innocent, only that the trial may have been grossly unfair. The government could secretly lie to us all they want. And it's not an issue that concerns the court without proof that the defendant is innocent. That is what the law requires. And we must always adhere to the rule of law, for it is our only path to justice and our only defense against overreach by the government. And this really is the end of the play. You see a ref will remain in prison until 2018. Mohammed Hussein will remain in prison until 2020. They are deeply missed by their wives and a total of 10 children, and by their community, their friends, and their supporters like us. Thank you.